Afternoon, everyone. Tier three, uh, kettle has boiled. Hope we're good. Um, it's an awful beautiful day. And um, we're going to talk about bite size learning today. So, welcome. I've got a biscuit, two biscuits. I've got a coconut ring. I don't know if I've had one of them before. Um, fine biscuit. Anyway, I uh, hope it's nice and sunny wherever you are. No rain. I'm hoping for a dry week. Um, I'm hoping for a dry week because I'm, I'm doing a play at the weekend, outdoors, tickets still available. Um, anyway, I've got a question. I've got a question for you. Um, uh, big question. Afternoon for home. I won't expect you to come. Um, it's a bit of a way to come to my play. Um, I've got a question for you because it's the Euros. The Euros are gripping the nation. Yes, I've dabbled, Fahim. Um, I'm in a play. I can't say the title of the play because there's a naughty word in it. Um, but, uh, yes, I'm in a little play. A little one-act play outside. Um, but anyway, that's what I'm doing um, at the weekend, rehearsing frantically. But anyway, um, I've got a question. Euros, Euros gripping the nation after a tremendous victory by the England team on Sunday. And so my question, you don't need to know anything about football, but it is football related. My question is, how many players from the Premier League, so that's the big league in England, how many players from the Premier League are at the Euros? So how many appear in squads? And just so you've got an idea, there's 20 teams in the Premier League and they're probably all running squads of about 20, let's say. So that's 400 players. And there's 24 teams in the Euros who can all have a, a squad of 26 players. So how many players have been named in the 24 squads from the uh, from the Premier League? That's the question today. Really, so it's, it's a number. Just guess a number. That's the, uh, that's the question. So I thought football related, you know. I thought it might be quite useful. So uh, anybody have a little guess for me? I can't have a question with no answers. You could just type any number for him and you'd be closest. Uh, 142 is not a bad guess, actually, my friend. Um, so I'll just eat my biscuit and hope that somebody else types a number in. But anyway, Sam Henley, 100. Good guess as well. Um, so I'm going to talk about bite-sized learning today. What we mean by it is it the way forward 138 for our Welcome to tea. Um, so what, what do we mean by bite-sized learning? And I'll talk about what Hems and Fraser are talking about there. I'm talking about short interjections of learning, 206. 156, less one from a Scottish goalkeeper, not getting involved, not getting involved. Um, <laughs> and um, so we're talking about short little bits of learning, short little bursts of learning. Um, sort of up from one minute, really, it could go up 15, 20 minutes. Sorry, Mr. Question, Clara. So the question, I'll come back to you because you're always very good at answering. My question is how many players, football players, from the Premier League, <laughs> close but no cigar, fee. Um, and also Kerry just completely ignored that and went 206. So how many players from the English Premier League are in the squads of the teams at the Euro 2020? And I said there's 20, 20 teams in the Premier League so there's probably about 400 players in the Premier League. And how many are at the Euros? There's 24 teams in the Euros. I'm sure you're an expert football fan, though, Clara. So, um, so yeah, so one to 15 minutes. Although we could kind of say, like, TED would count. TED Talks would count as a little bit of bite-sized learning. Obviously, they're just that wee bit longer, generally. Um, and, and up to then, um, the modules might be about 60 minutes. Things like online learning might be 60-minute modules. We'd still say that um, even bite-sized learning, it, it works best as a blend. So we're not saying it's going to replace or, or just be, be that. So it should still form part of a blend. And it should still be planned. It should still be systematically planned training. So what we shouldn't be doing is just taking existing modules of a day, half a day, three hours, and just going, I'll just do 10 minutes of that. Yeah. So it should be still specifically planned for that little 10 minute chunk. Um, and you know, learning has changed massively. When I was first involved, um, I remember we used to run a two week program with, um, and people used to go home at the weekend. So we've gone from two weeks and now we're right down. So it's a different world out there now. 
But where, where does people attention, that where, where does their span sit on some of these things? Well, if we're doing something like a video, um, unless it's a TED video, if it's just like me kind of talking or something like that, um, maybe three to five minutes. That's about as long as people will engage for. Um, a blog, uh, people will hold for about six minutes, maybe just a little bit over. If it's a podcast, um, it'll go longer, 15 to 18 minutes. TEDs, we're aware that people will sit for 20 minutes. They will do that. They're, they're pretty easy to consume for people because of the myriad of ways we can get to them. And it makes them a lot more flexible. Um, and, and people just need it as they, as they want it. And, and you know, I, I, I'm always big on that. How does this, does it, does this kind of work in real life? You know, is this how I learn in real life? And um, something happened to me um, just, just at the weekend. Um, so a friend, a friend of mine came over and had a cup of tea. And um, anyway, I just went to Lou and he came out and he said, I think I'll bring you a toilet. And uh, which is ne never something you ever want to hear anybody say. And um, he said, I'll just press the flush button. And it's just kept going. And these are not the hands of a workman. I'm no plumber. So, of course, what, what do I do? I go for bite-sized learning. I go for bite-sized learning, and I go to YouTube. How do I change a push-button flush? Yeah, and it's like a five-minute video, and I see somebody do it, and, and I just go to the to like the local shop, the screw fix shop, and I buy a button, and I come and put it back on. I don't need to be a plumber. I don't need to qualify as a plumber to change the push-button flush. So it's just like that bite-sized learning, just, just the right thing, and it's just in time. I didn't need to know that. I never needed to know how to change that. When I had my bathroom refitted, I got men in because I wanted them to do it all. Yeah, but that bit, and it cost me £4.89, that push button flush. Um, so £4.89. I feel like a plumber now. Um, it's flexible. Um, and what I mean by that is, is you might have five modules, A, B, C, D, and E, but one person might want A, B, and C, and one person might want C, A, and E. So not only can they pick the modules, they can pick the order they do them in, and they can even pick the methodologies and the mediums that they're getting them in. Some people might like to read, some people might like to watch, etc. When do we crave this kind of learning? Uh, well, a lot of times it is just in time. Uh, um, and more than half the people who, who want to learn um, want to do it like that, just in time. However, there's still a close amount of people, and, and you know, this is probably a whole different debate, but 48% of people still like learning at weekends, sort of pick things up, and that's professionally as well as personally. There's still a, nearly a half of the amount of people want to just learn at their desk, so in their workspace. Might not necessarily be just in time, but at their desk. People still learn at lunch, so watch things um, just at lunch. And um, if we get back to normal, there's still a lot of people who would learn on the commute. But there's some goods and bads about the commute because, you know, even if you've got an hour journey, it'd be very, very hard to watch a 40 minute session online. But a five minute, that's a much better thing. So, you know, if there was like a little video on maybe how to give feedback, somebody could watch that on the way in and then contact the feedback session as soon as they got to the office. So it will sit quite nicely. Um, and it's more chance of being used because it's, it's kind of right there. It's kind of right there for people. Now, we have, to be, we have to think about where, where it's going to be looked at, how it's going to be utilised. Um, and, yeah, people are going to use it off desktops or laptops. But a lot of times we're going to look at it on the phone. Um, so in, in the time when people want to find something out, over 90% of people will go to their phone. Even if they're at a desk, they will still pick their phone up and go to it rather than open the, the Google tab or whatever and look at it there. They'll just pick their phone up and then they'll carry on working. So it's got to be very transmissible on a smaller, a smaller um, device. And, and it's, it's shown that people, on average, look at their, their mobile phone 10 times an hour, which is um, fairly frightening. Um, so what can we do on the trains? Uh, what can we do in a simple workspace? Um, but people are still doing it when they go out to dinner. You only have to see that. And we can still learn in that kind of environment. From a training business point of view, yes, it, it, it's easier because we're – we're preparing and presenting smaller things. And once we have the framework of how to maybe um, design a blog, design a podcast, make a video, we can just insert things. It can therefore be quicker. We can get to market quicker. We can adapt things quicker because we can just take one bit out and put something new in. If there's a change in business, if there's a change in tool that we can use. And Hemsley Fraser has that as its offering. 
out there now. Hemsley Fraser is offering nano learning. So you can you can Google that. Um, nano learning at hemsleyfraser.co.uk or .com if you're in the US. Um, so please have a look at that because this is the shape and the way that we will begin. We, we are learning. We are doing it. Think about how everybody's learning constantly, all the time now. Where do you go? And, and that's what we can bring, both as trainers and as learners. Excellent. That's a nice 11 minutes. And um, how many players? Well, my lowest guess is 100. My highest guess is 206. But the correct guess is 116. There are 116 players. So I think that actually makes Sam the closest, just dipping under. So 116 players from the Premier League are representing um, the countries in the Euros. Good luck to them all. I hope you have a great week, whatever you're doing. I hope the sun keeps shining, and I'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Mm -hmm.